please, sir. Uh, Scrooge and Marley's, I believe. Yes, sir. Is there anything I can do for you, sir? Well, if it is quite convenient, I should like to speak with a member of the firm. Hmm? You, uh, you wish to see me, I presume, sir? Yes. Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. Oh. Dead as a doornail. Died seven years ago, this very night. Oh. We took the liberty of calling on you at your chambers, Mr. Scrooge, uh, thinking that you would have finished business for the day, but we failed to make anyone here. That's not surprising. I'm the only person who lives there. Right. Consequently, we have called here. At this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, it seems more than usually desirable to make some slight provision for the poor and destitute who suffer terribly at this present time. Many thousands are in want of common necessaries. Hundreds of thousands are in want of common comforts, sir. Are there no prisons? Yes. Plenty of prisons. The union workhouses are still in operation, eh? They are still. I wish I could say they were not. Warlaw and the treadmill are in full vigor then, eh? Both very busy, sir. Uh, very very sir. I thought from what you said that something had occurred to interfere with them in their useful course. Very very sir. Very very Under the impression that they scarcely furnish Christmas cheer of mind and body for the multitude, some few of us are endeavoring to raise a fund to buy the poor of London meat and drink and means of warmth. We choose this time because this is the time of all others when want is keenly felt and abundance rejoices. Now, what shall I put you down for? Nothing. Nothing? Oh, oh I see. You wish to be anonymous. I wish to be left alone, sir. Since you ask me what is my wish, that is my answer. I don't make many myself at Christmas. I can't afford to make a lot of idle people there. I hope to support the institutions we've just mentioned. They cost enough. People are badly off, they'd better go there. Many can't go there. Many would rather die. Well, if they'd rather die, they'd better do it. And decrease the surplus population. Besides, excuse me, sir, I don't know that. But you should know it. It's not my business, sir. A man's got enough to do in this world to mind his own business. Without interfering with a lot of other people's, mine occupies me constantly. Good evening, sir. Allow me to express my regrets, sir, if I have said anything. Good evening. evening. May I inquire, Mr. Cratchit, what you're doing with that shovel full of coal? Why, I beg your pardon, sir, but the outer office is intensely cold, and my fire... You know, your fire. I should have said your fire, sir. Yes, sir. It shows symptoms of going out, and I thought I might venture to replenish it with a small quantity of coal. Yes. Yeah. Well, of course, you know, it's very evident to me, you know, Mr. Cratchit, that you and I left apart. Oh, oh I see no help for it, sir. You don't pay for the coal, so you can afford to be reckless. Therefore, very evident to me, sir, you know, that my interest is not your interest. Nor my welfare, your welfare. Get out of the work, sir. That'll keep you warm enough. I'm not cold. Why should you be? And I am your senior <coughs> by a great many years, I fancy. All about a small shovel full of coal. And none of your mumbling, you know, none of your mumbling. You, you have a wife and family to support, I understand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many children have you got? Around half a dozen, sir. Three boys and three girls. Tut, tut, tut. Can I afford a wife? Yes, sir. Eh? Uh, I mean, no, sir. Have I any children? I don't know, sir. Eh? No. No, sir. How much am I constrained to pay you a week for your services? Fifteen shillings, sir. Ah. 
be to your interest, sir, to see that you're worth it. by one consent to open their shut hearts freely. And therefore, though it's never put a scrap of gold or silver in my bucket, I believe it has done me good and will do me good. And I say, God bless it. Here, here. Here, here. Mr. Cratchit, if I hear another word from you, you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. Dear, 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 dear. Quite a powerful speaker, sir. I wonder you don't go into Parliament. Don't be angry, Uncle.
gentlemen continue to enjoy themselves. Call silence for the loyal toast. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, pray silence for the right honourable, the Lord Mayor of London. My lord. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, her most gracious majesty, the Queen.
Ebenezer Scrooge, for only you can see me. What you want with me? Much. Who are you? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. In life? Why do you trouble me? It is required of everyone that the spirit within him should walk abroad among his fellow men. And if that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. My spirit never walked beyond the narrow limits of our money-changing hall. So I cannot rest. I cannot stay. I cannot linger anywhere. You... are fitted. Why? I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it, link by link. Would you know the weight and length of the coil you bear yourself? Speak words of comfort to me, Jacob Marley. Speak words of comfort. Comfort? I have none to give. I am here to warn you. To save you, if that be possible. To warn. To save me. From what? From such a fate as mine. To wander through the world and witness what I cannot share, but might have shared on earth, and turn to happiness. But you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Business. Mankind should have been my business. 
charity, forbearance, benevolence, all were my business, as they should be yours. Now heed me, for my time is short. You will be haunted by three spirits. Without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. You shall behold the visions of a Christmas past, a Christmas present, and a Christmas yet to come. Expect the first when the clock strikes midnight tonight. Mommy! Look to see me no more. Mommy! Money is due and must be paid. But, sir, that's impossible. Then I shall have no alternative but to take immediate steps to recover it. But, sir, you must see that if... That is the way I conduct my business. You don't mean... Sell us up? That is precisely what I do mean. But, sir, I couldn't work in the hospital. Mr. Scrooge, I beg of you. Good day. You can't do this. You can't be so unjust. Give us a little more time. A week. sentiment to enter this counting house. I should be in the bankruptcy court within a year. And as for that couple who've just gone out, well, set your mind at rest about them. Worthless, shiftless pair, who had my good money, now want to avoid paying it back. Your money. Your good money. They asked you for a little breathing space, a little time in which to pay. That's all. Enough of this, Bill. I'm ready to make allowances for your feelings as a woman. And I must ask you to leave my business affairs alone. When you marry me, I shall insist. Take leave. 
believe of your senses. I've tried hard not to believe what they've said about you. I'd give anything not to believe it now. But the evidence of my own eyes and ears, I must believe. You are not all the And I can see now that one passion and one passion only engrosses you. Gain. But then, even if it were so, I'm not changed towards you. You are changed. Changed in every way. You're not the man you are. Our contract's an old one, made when we were poor and content to be so. May we happy, alone, in the life you've chosen. this afternoon. Oh, who was it? You guess. How can I? I don't know. It wasn't Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge it was. I passed his office window, and as it was not shut up and there was a candle inside, I could scarcely help see him. His partner's on, on the point of death, I hear. There he sat, alone. Quite alone in the world, I do believe Spirit, I cannot bear it. Haunt me no more. I told you these were the shadows of the things that have been, that they are what they are. Do not blame me. Take me back. <sighs> Twelve o'clock, I know it is. under compulsion and learn the lesson which is working now. If you have aught to teach me, let me profit by it. Touch my robe. And you shall see how your poor clerk, with his paltry fifteen shillings a week, which you so grudgingly dole out to him, keeps Christmas. Touch my robe. Up 
you get tiny, Tim. church saw him because he was a cripple and that it might be pleasant for them to remember upon a Christmas day who made lame beggars walk and blind men see. But he's growing stronger. Yes, growing strong and hearty. I wish I could believe you, Bob. I'm afraid. For what we are about to receive, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. Yeah. And its favor will I know surpass my utmost expectations. Yeah. With the mashed potato oh. and the apple sauce, oh. it will, I am sure, present a delightful combination that we shall remember until our dying day. Yeah. Delicious. Delicious. That's the best goose we ever had, Mother. Yes, indeed. Oh, yes. Mm. I've eaten too much. <laughs> and even now, we haven't eaten at all. <laughs> you laugh. Laugh. I envy them. <laughs> My dear, regarding the momentous question, pudding. <laughs> you look pale, my love. And nervous. I am oh. nervous, my dear. And anxious about that pudding. Pray heaven all will be well. I'll go and fetch it. Let me come and help you, Mother. You shall, my dear. Oh, you look 
I'm anxious about that pudding. Gone a long time. Supposing the pudding has broken in turning it out. What? Or supposing that somebody has got over the back wall and stolen it. But, my dear, the children, Christmas Day. It should be Christmas Day, I'm sure, on which one drinks the help of such an odious, stingy, hard, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. You know he is, Robert. Nobody knows it better than you do, poor fellow. My dear, Christmas Day. Well, I'll drink his health for your sake and the day's, not his. He'll be very merry and very happy, I've no doubt. Here's Mr. Scrooge's health. Now, children, all together, Mr. Scrooge's health. Mr. Mr. Scrooge's health. Mr. Scrooge's health. And now, Tiny Tim will sing to us. Yes, yes I, I do. do sing. What shall I sing? Hark the Herald Angels. Yes, yes, Hark the Herald Angels. Hark the Herald Angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy my own. Come now and see how others keep Christmas. Ha, 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 ha. 
liked it, too. Well, more shame on him, Fred. Oh, he's a comical old fellow, and that's the truth. He isn't so pleasant as he might be. Well, his offences carry their own punishments, and I have nothing to say against him. But surely he's very rich. At least you've often told me so. Well, what of that, my dear? His wealth is of no use to him. He doesn't do any good with it. He can't make himself comfortable with it. He hasn't even the satisfaction of thinking that he's ever going to benefit us with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've no patience with your Uncle Scrooge. Oh, I have. I'm sorry for him. And here, he's taken it into his head to dislike us, and he won't even come and dine with us. <laughs> well, what are you going to play? Riddles! Good. I'll ask you one. <coughs> what does the following represent? An animal. Rather a disagreeable animal. A savage animal. An animal that grunts and growls. And talks and lives in London. But walks the streets. Yes. And isn't even made a show off. No. Doesn't live in a menagerie. No. Isn't the horse. No. 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 Ghost of the future. I fear you more than any specter I have seen. You are about to show me shadows of the things that have not been, but will be in the time to come. And as I hope to live to be another man from what I was, I am prepared to bear you company. I don't know much about it either way. I only know he's dead. When did he die? Last night, I believe. Why, what was the matter with him? I thought he'd never die. <laughs> Heaven knows. What's he done with his money? Left it to his company, perhaps. He hasn't left it to me. That's all I know. <laughs> how are you? Very well, how are you? So old Nick has got his own at last. Yes, so I'm told. <laughs> cold, isn't it? Seasonable for Christmas time. Oh, yeah. You're not a skater, I suppose. Oh, no, no. I've got something else to think about. <laughs> I do not see myself in my accustomed place. Where am I? Why am I not there? The charwoman alone to be the first. Let the laundress alone to be the second. And let the undertaker's men alone to be the third. Look here, old Joe. Here's a chance. 
If we have no free media without meaning it. <laughs> you, you couldn't have met in a better place. Come into the parlor. Don't stand there staring as if you were afraid, woman. Who's the worst for the loss of a few things like this? Not a dead man, I hope. Open this bundle, old Joe, and let me know the value of it. I ain't afraid to be the first, nor afraid for them to see it. Another sixpence. Now mine, Joe. Ha! Eight shillings. I always give too much to ladies. It's a weakness of mine. <laughs> and now unto my bundle, Joe. Big curtains. Ah, <laughs> big curtains. You don't mean to say you took them down, rings and all, with him lying there? Why not? You was born to make your fortune, <laughs> and you will certainly do it. <laughs> Here, don't drop the oil on the blankets. His blankets? Whose else's? He's likely to take cold without them, I dare say. <laughs> I hope he didn't die of anything catching. Oh, don't you be afraid of that. Ah, you can look through that shirt until your eyes ache and you won't find a hole in it. It's the best he had. It would have been wasted if it hadn't been for me. What do you call wasting of it? Putting it on him to be buried in, to be sure. I took it off him. <laughs> Calico's just as for coming to the body. <laughs> he couldn't have looked uglier than he did in that one. <laughs> this is the end of it, you see. He frightened everyone away from him when he was alive to profit us when he was dead. I see, I see. The case of this unhappy man might be my own. My life tends that way now. Merciful heavens, what is that? This is the man they spoke of. Neglected. Robbed. Hated. Can you not show me some tenderness connected with death? Oh, 
my eyes. Makes me weep by candlelight. I wouldn't show weak eyes to your father when he comes home from work. Must be near his time. Past it, rather. I think he walks a little slower than he used these last few evenings, Mother. Yes. I've known him walk with... I've known him walk with Tiny Tim upon his shoulder very fast indeed. So have I, often. So have I. But he was very light to carry. And his father loved him so it was no trouble. No trouble. your father at the door. Well, my dear. Well, father. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah. <clears throat> my dear, you have been quick. They'll be done long before Sunday. Sunday? You went today then, Robert? Yes, my dear. I've seen where our tiny Tim is to rest. It had done you good to see how green a place it is. Hmm. Oh, you see it off. I promised him that we would walk there over Sunday. My little child. Tiny Tim, thy childish essence was from God. I met Mr. Scrooge's nephew today, and he said to me, I'm heartily sorry for you, Mr. Cratchit, and heartily sorry for your good wife. Though how he knew that, I don't know. Knew what, my dear? Why, that you were a good wife. Everybody knows that. <laughs> well observed, my boy. Mm. And he said, if there's any service that I can do for you, pray come to me. It almost seemed as though he had known our tiny kid and felt with us. And I'm sure... We shall none of us forget him, nor this first parting that has been among us. Never, John. And I know that when we recollect how patient and how mild he was, although he was but a little child, 
We shall not quarrel easily among ourselves and forget poor Tiny Tim in doing it. I'm very happy. Very happy. Now, Spirit, tell me what man that was whom we saw lying dead. to the stone at which you point. Tell me, are these the shadows of the things that will be? Or are they the shadows of the things that may be only? Jacob Marley, heaven and Christmas time be praised for this. I thank you. On my knees, I thank you, Jacob. On my knees. Oh. Oh. They're not torn down. They're not torn down. Boy, you're a remarkable boy. 
Do you know if they've sold the prize turkey that they had hanging there? It'll be hanging there now. Well, you go and buy it. Walker. No, no, no. I'm in earnest. You go and buy it and bring it back here, and I'll tell you where to take it. And you come back with a man, and I'll give you a shilling. You come back in less than five minutes, and I'll give you half a crown. Hooray! Go on, hurry up, hurry up. I, I'm, I'm going to send it to my, to my club, Bob Cratchit. <laughs> he won't know where it comes from. It's twice the size of Tiny Tim. He, he's not dead, you know. He, he's not dead.
No, bless my soul. My dear Mr. Scrooge, are you serious? A round hundred. Yes, and not a farthing net. Not oh, a farthing net, sir. I'm afraid there are many back payments included oh, in this. Oh, dear Mr. Scrooge. You come round and see me? You will come round? We will. We will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you, gentlemen. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that won't come and dine with you? Uncle Scrooge! Oh, 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 oh. Still, what's the consequence? He won't lose much of a dinner. Oh. Indeed. Well, I think he'll lose a very good dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Master in, my dear? Yes, sir. Can I see him, my love? He's in the dining room, sir. I'll show you in. He, he knows me. He, he knows me. <laughs> you sit there. Thank you. You sit here, Thank you so much. <laughs> It is I, your Uncle Scrooge. I've come to dinner. Will you let me in, Fred? Why, it's Uncle Scrooge. He can't be. Will I? A Merry Christmas to you, Uncle. Come in. Come in and join us. Welcome, Uncle. And a Merry Christmas. Thank you, my dear. A Merry Christmas to you all. A Merry Christmas. coming here at this time of day. I'm very really sorry, sir. I am behind my time. I think you are, sir. I think you are. There's only one thing here, sir. It shan't be repeated. I was making rather merry yesterday, sir. So I tell you what it is, my fine fellow. I'm not going to stand it any longer. And therefore, therefore, I'm sir, going to raise your salary. Sir, you must be joking. Never more serious in all this life, Bob. I'm going to raise his salary, and as for tiny things, I'll be a second father to you. God bless you. No more work today, Bob. No work today. Make haste to your family, Bob. They'll be wanting it today, Bob. They'll be wanting it today. A Merry Christmas, Bob. A Merry Christmas. My good fellow and I have given you for many a year. Go on now. 
Go on. Merry Christmas to all the world. Happy New Year to everyone. God bless us all. God bless us everyone.